In this video, I build the second stage of our multi-material mega factory, building a factory with three working floors to blast, wash, haunt, hand crush, sand and clay into loads of other blocks. I also create a couple of working forklift trucks to transport items around the factory area, as well as completely rebuilding the internals of the previous factory to thoroughly optimize its output. Let's create. In the last episode, we built the first part of our mega multi-material factory, and it produces a whole bunch of things. And since the last video, I've even done some upgrades, starting with pressing our iron nuggets into iron ingots. I've also split the cobble so that we can save some cobble and it won't all just get processed by everything else. And every single one of these storage vaults has a threshold switch on it now and everything is on and offable and speed controllable too. We've got clutches on every single system with redstone links and that means that everything in here is a lot more optimized. And everything is also now toggleable from here. I can turn off the individual lanes or I can turn off the whole factory with that switch saving myself a bunch of power and a bunch of lag too. But I want it on because I want to collect resources. The next part of this process is to build the next stage in our factory and this one's going to have even more going on than the first one. So our first factory produces cobblestone, gravel, iron nuggets which get turned into iron ingots, flint, sand and clay balls. And the next stage of our factory is going to take a bunch of the sand and move that into three lanes generating glass, soul sand and even more clay balls. These clay balls are going to come along here and get turned into clay blocks and also bricks. Some of the clay blocks are then going to be taken and turned into terracotta, and some of the terracotta is going to be taken and turned into red sand. So by the end of this part, we're going to be collecting red sand, terracotta, clay blocks, bricks, more clay, soul sand, and glass. That's quite a lot of things to achieve. And that's quite a lot of things to fit into a very small space here. And speaking of small spaces, I'm thinking of changing this layout a little bit. So I'm thinking of moving this rail line up a little bit and having a yard behind all of these things with some other contraptions going around delivering things. Because it's going to be quite tricky getting the sand and the clay out of here and into this factory without basically a spaghetti belt system. And I've been thinking, wouldn't it be nice if we had forklift trucks running about doing all of that? So I think that's where we should get started. So I'm going to place down an incredibly temporary track, throw down a station on it so we can actually get this thing built, and then figure out which bogies would be best for a forklift truck. Now we have all sorts of different bogies available, and only some of them are available for narrow gauge track. And we've got the standard ones, and we've got these ones, and I don't think either of those will work. However, I do think this will work, the invisible one. For instance, we could have these little coal blocks as wheels. I also need to think about how we're going to disguise this track because I don't really want track on here, but I've had another idea. And that idea is to dig down under here, put the track at this level where it's disguised and then have the contraption coming up through it because contraptions can go through blocks. And now I've got to think about how I'm going to build a forklift truck and I've never done that before. So that could be interesting. So forklift trucks tend to have smaller wheels at the back. So we're going to throw down a couple of coal blocks there. And I guess I can do something with frame blocks to get the front ones potentially. So I guess just a few frame trap doors around those just make that look a little bit bigger for the upright i think we can use these half stairs with some of these going up like this and then these bits will work for our forks now these top trap doors are going to be causing all sorts of problems with our frame blocks around the cab Along the side, I think I'm going to use these slabs so that I can double them up because we're not going to see inside. So this will feel a little bit like trim. Then we just need the sort of yellowy cab bit at the top. And I don't know if I've got any yellow. Yep, I like it. I think it's a fine and dandy little forklift truck. It's going to do exactly what we need. Although that said, I think I might change the color of these tines so that they don't match the rest of the metal. And while the blackstone does have the right darkness, it's very purple but I think that works better. One thing it needs is a portable storage interface, which I'm going to hide in there. What I think I'm going to do at the front is have like a chest or a couple of barrels actually being held by the forks. There we go. That's better. It's now carrying a crate. I really like that. I think that's come out absolutely fantastic. So I think if I glue this up and see if it works, we may have ourselves a little fork truck. Forklift one. That'll do for now. And let's see if it actually drives. Oh, I've left the top bits. Apart from the top bits, though, that is driving. Right, now what I'm going to do is take a little bit of time getting some track underneath here. Although it's probably going to be relatively temporary because I don't really know where it's going to go until we've got this next factory in. Speaking of things that have got to go... Oh, jeez. The back. Throw, throw your axe, sir. That's it. And again, stop moving. There we go. Thank you. So a system kind of like this with a funnel on here that spits out the items onto these belts and goes into this funnel, connects with that, and that connects with the forklift truck at this level. And that just means that I need the track just down here. 
Well, I'm by no means finished. Thought I've dug out a big old area underneath all of this thing where all the track's going to be going. But then I had a crash. The server didn't crash, but my PC did. And when I log back in, everything over here's overstressed, which normally means our power stations run out of power. But it shouldn't have done because it's all chunk loaded now. So I'm a little bit concerned. This train's not empty in lava. That's full. These are all going. And power's coming out across here, but it's not going across there. Or there. I think this might be a bug i guess if i smash that and smash that smash that and smash that i can plug them back on again there we go <laughs> fixed weird yep everything's running as normal right time for track that's not too bad good oh and i haven't actually dug out far enough this way oh geez more digging oh no oh geez oh geez i've done it again and there we go the whole thing is now connected in every possible which way what i don't want it to do is yeah bang into the corners we can reverse around this corner here hopefully without crashing into it we did oh that's good news and then we can come around this way yeah oh this is wonderful oh look at this look at our forklift truck going around the factory oh i could do this all day oh this is wonderful <laughs> but i can't do this all day i've got jobs to do don't you know right i've had it in a whole bunch of signals on all of these intersections we've got Got a whole bunch of crazy stuff going on and i've added in a couple of stations as well and i'm ready to give this thing a test which means we need a driver uh, and i'm going to pick this fly for now oh there's really one <laughs> sorry i don't need you and the schedule says go to the filling station then reverse then go to deposit one and then reverse it's going somewhere it's going to the filling station now it's going to reverse up. Excellent. That's doing the right thing. And it's going around there. Good. Now he's coming forward. This is good news. Well done. Good job, sir. We'll wait there for five seconds. And then with a bit of luck, he's going to go all the way back to reverse. He is. Oh, this is brilliant. And now we should go back to fill one. He's doing it. Oh, my goodness. All right, let's build another forklift. Cannon, barrel, table, clipboard, gunpowder. The cannon is running, but I have a little bit of a problem. It wants a block that doesn't technically exist. It's calling it frame double slabs. And what a frame double slab is, is two slabs together that make a double slab. But you can't actually just make those. You have to place them in the world. So that means this thing's built what it needs to build, but it's missing a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to have to add a few things in manually, which really isn't a problem. I think that's all the main blocks. So now I can go around and texture it all but this forklift's not going to be the same as the other one it's going to be slightly different because this one's going to be orange oh yes very orangey forklifty colory and when i'm missing one frame block and i haven't got any more of that so i'll have to do a different one but no one will notice we'll notice no you won't so our yellow forklift this is going to be picking items up from these vaults and taking them to our new factory which we haven't built yet the orange forklift is going to be going to all of the item vaults along the whole thing and then coming down to where our station yard is going to be and depositing them down here obviously none of that exists yet so i really need to get cracking on building this new factory oh geez Well, there's clearly still a bunch left to do, but I'm pretty happy with how it's come out. Obviously, this time I've gone for a completely different shape and style. We've got a different roof on there. We've got bits that stick out of the back. And I've added in a connection that's going to connect us to our next factory as well. Now, I did want to add a connection between these two, but I don't think the levels are going to meet up too well. And there's one thing that's concerning me slightly, and that's the fact that this extension doesn't really fit over the platform bit. And that's kind of where our fork trucks are going to go. So that could end up being a bit of a problem. Well, we can worry about that later. But now we need to concentrate on the internals of this place. And as you can see, it seems to be a lot bigger on the inside than our other one. And that's basically just because it's a lot more square. It's a lot more tall. And we've got this extra bit over here. And I thought we'd need a whole bunch of extra space for all of the things that we're going to have to squeeze in here. And I'm thinking we're probably going to be splitting this over multiple floors. So first things first, we're going to need to get our sand and potentially some of this clay as well round to the front of this building and dump it on here somewhere but going back for a quick recap on what we're actually going to be doing we need three separate lines just to process sand two separate lines to process clay and then we need two more lines to process the terracotta in the red sand there's a whole bunch of stuff
stuff to squeeze in there. And it took me my entire life almost to get all of this squeezed in here. And there's hardly anything going on in here compared to there. And look, we've got no power again. Everything stopped, but there's some strange things going on here. These ones are spinning here. Although they're not spinning there, that's a bit weird. And if we go over here, the strangest thing is that these ones are spinning here, but those ones aren't spinning there. There's something really weird going on with our power situation here, and I don't know what it is. But fortunately, it's not too difficult to fix. All I gotta do is break a couple of these things and stick them back on again. And there we go, we're all connected again. Good. That means this factory should start running unless this, the reason this has stopped is because everything's full. Yes, it is. Everything's absolutely full to the brim. Oh, good. In that case, we'll have plenty to get on with when we get it over here. And in order to get it over here, I really need to fix all of this situation up and I'm still umming and ahhing what to do about this gravel. See, I'd really like this entire section to be covered in variations of gravel, but then if I do that, this is going to happen. And if I have a block underneath to support it, I'm not going to be able to get in to see all of these tracks. So the other option is to fill this in entire area that with these framed slabs or even just framed blocks and then color in the gravel with that and that's probably not a bad idea but framed blocks tend to be quite laggy in high quantities and i'm already using an absolute ton of them over here alternatively <laughs> Don't say it. <laughs> Alternatively, I could drop the entire thing down and make the bogeys for those longer so I could actually get underneath. But it's already taken me ages to get all this sorted out. I really don't want to have to lay it all down again. That said, there's not that much track, but that's a whole bunch more digging, a whole bunch more signal. Oh, jeez. No, I don't want to do that. We'll go for the frame blocks. It's fine. What could go wrong? Okay, we've now got a whole bunch of gravel around here and you might be thinking, what about snow? All of these roofs have got snow on and there's no snow down there. Well, there's a couple of things about that. The first of all, I'm... <laughs> Jeez, this just whizzed past my head. No, stop it. First of all, I'm thinking that this is a heavy traffic area. Forklift trucks whizzing about, probably getting rid of a lot of the snow. Probably people here cleaning up the snow as well so the forklifts can drive around. Second of all, I've got to consider where the snow is actually going to come down to. Obviously, our ski village is all going to be very snowy, but if we're going to be having farms and crops and things down here, we're going to have to have a snow line at some point. And I'm thinking this third building here, when we finally build, it's probably only going to about have maybe half of the roof covered in snow i will dot around a few bits of snow here and there later on in this build but right now i think it's time to get all of these things connected and get our new farm sorted out so i've brought my forklift truck over to here and i've added another interface in there so it can interface at this section here let's bring the container on the inside there we'll need a funnel going into it with a belt so if we do that like that and stick a funnel on there that will be able to take the items on there take them onto this conveyor and then i guess we probably just need to remove this post then if i extend that out one block pop the funnel on there that should be our little system there set up although it is going to need power in terms of power we're going to take off that bit there and we're going to stick a clutch on here so we can turn this entire factory off bit of chain drive a little bit more chain drive and there we go we connected to power so if we hop up here we should see sand coming in off there and going in there fantastic and some andesite casing scaffolding oh geez oh well that's fine Next, I need to add a little station in here, and I think it probably wants to go about that point there. There are always, I think, one block in front of the bogey. So let's drop that there, and we'll call that sand drop-off. Now right, we just need a driver now to automate this. And this time, instead of using a conductor, I'm going to use one of them monkeys. Seems though they seem to have a lot of jobs in this area. You can come and be my forklift driver, buddy. You, in there, have a schedule. There we go. He's off already. 
It's going to go drop off the sand. This is wonderful. What a good job you're doing, sir. And he's going back again, driving that forklift truck like a pro. Where are you going? Where are you going? I couldn't have made it easier for... <laughs> Now you're going to be facing the wrong way. You're not going to, it's not going to meet up now. You went, you've gone the wrong way, you moron. How did you do that? Oh, well, at least he's going to go again. But now you're going to be facing the wrong way again. You absolute nincompoop. Never get a monkey as a driver. I would put this down to my signaling more than the monkey's inability to drive the forklift truck. He's not crashed into anything. He's just clearly going the wrong way. You useless... Useless monkey. Now there is a pretty easy way to deal with this and that would be to take out the second set of controls So he has to go forward, but that means every time he did it, he'd be going around the whole block Which isn't a problem. I just kind of like the idea that he was reversing down there But I think sensibly that's the thing to do and then he's not gonna get confused. Oh now where's he going? Where you go and you're going the wrong way again You're gonna end up facing the wrong way again you useless. Where are you going now? Are well, you going back there again, but you've already dropped off the sand sir go there we go and now he's going the right way this is good news he's stopping in the right place yes he's collecting items oh what a good job you are doing monkey he is now collecting all of his sand and he's off again he's going to deposit his sand oh what a good job you're doing oh i've trained him so well okay now that the monkey is successfully delivering us plenty of sand we now need to turn all of this sand into plenty of things starting with glass soul sand and clay so we're going to need lava soul fire and water easy so we need to bring it upstairs split this belt into three take one that way one that way and one that way that said i want everything coming out the bottom out of that way hmm then maybe we should bring it up here go across to the back of the room and then split the belts going that way that kind of makes more sense i think a floor up here would be good but i don't dare put one in in case i need the space when i'm doing the downstairs stuff but i think it'll be fine so yeah i'm gonna put a floor in and i'm putting spruce in but factories normally have concrete floors upstairs away with the spruce and a little bit more we're gonna use eroded tough instead because it looks more like an actual sort of factory -y concrete floor type thing all right, now that we've got a second floor in, we need to be considerate of how this is all going to fit and go in. Obviously, we've got room for a third floor here again, which I think could be more offices. I kind of like the idea that this is offices and the people working here are keeping their eye on the train yard and stuff like that. We also need a way up to get in here and we need a way to get those items back down. So I think what I should do at this point is spend a little bit of time just figuring out where all these lines are going to go and then bringing you back once I've got an idea of how it's all going to go out. Well, I've been fiddling with this for way longer than I would like to add admit and so far i've got quite an incredible looking system going on that being said i think i'm going to change it all well let me talk you through what's going on anyway i've designed these incredible new washing haunting and blasting machines these will work with any type of washing blasting haunting basically fan based production and they work incredibly fast in fact let me just hop into creative to show you this system here will either wash smelt or haunt a whole stack every two seconds at the moment is set up for glass if i throw a bunch of sand in there you'll see as it comes along the conveyor and gets to this fan point here we get pretty much a constant stream of it coming out of this other funnel you get two stacks then you wait a couple of seconds then another couple of stacks come through and then you wait a couple of seconds and then another couple of stacks come through and on average this works out at about a stack every two and a half seconds which is crazy anyway back in the survival world so what i've done is i've basically got our vault here and i've also started pumping in clay from our clay system over here because i think we're going to need a lot of clay for this build but the thing that I've been thinking is, rather than having all of these different machines for every different end product, considering how fast these blasters, washers and haunters are, why don't I have one floor dedicated to blasting, one floor dedicated to washing, and then one floor dedicated to haunting and crushing? So the way I'm thinking of doing it is bringing all of the items that need smelting to the top floor, having our smelters up there, dropping everything down onto this level, having the washing system on this level, and then dropping everything back down to here to finish off in this room. And I think that would be a whole lot better but it's already taken me literally hours to get to this point thinking it all through so i guess it's going to be another few hours before i got that sorted Okay, the upstairs is done and I've decided to add two blasting machines in here just to take up the space really so it didn't just feel like there was nothing going on. And I think this looks really interesting. The items will come out into the item vaults, go along these conveyors and then into these chutes. And those chutes are going to bring all of the items down onto the next level through into here. And then this room is going to be our washing room. So I guess I need to set up a washer. However, before I set up a washer, I need to really decide which items are actually needing to be washed and what items we're going to be getting coming from the blasting machine. 
machine. So we're going to need to be getting clay balls, clay blocks and sand up this conveyor. And that means we're going to be having bricks, terracotta and glass coming down there. And we don't need to wash any of those things. In fact, all we need to wash is sand into clay balls and then feed them back into the system. So... Hmm. So thinking about all this, this is probably not the best setup to get the items down and this is definitely not the best setup to get the items up because in order to get the clay balls up there, we actually need to wash a bunch of sand as well to double up our clay balls. So what I think I'm going to do is bring the sand around this room here into two machines, one haunting machine and one washing machine. The washing machine will send the clay balls back into there so they can go back upstairs and the soul sand can go straight out into one of the storage vaults. We'll have more sand going all the way up into there in order to get blasted and that's our sand sorted out and we'll bring some of the clay balls up into this room to be pressed turned into clay blocks which will then send back upstairs to get blasted into terracotta we'll bring that terracotta back down into here to get crushed into red sand and then those can all go downstairs and out i think that's the way i'm going to do it oh this is getting complicated i knew it would and now downstairs is sort of sorted out. But that means we've got all of the clay balls we need now going into these chutes, which can then come up here. Now we want some of them going all the way to the top floor to get blasted, but we also want some on this floor to get pressed into clay blocks. So I think, if I remember correctly with these things, we can actually divert those off and have that split. So we'll get half going up there and half going up there, I think. Let's throw a belt in to take the items off there. We'll bring the items around this corner towards the back wall so we've got plenty of space. Then all we need on here is a basin with a press going into it with a brass funnel going in there and that will take the clay balls press them into clay blocks and they're going to come out of there and then we need the clay blocks going into there but also in this room we need to crush the terracotta that's coming from down here and we also need the rest of that that's coming from down there to go down that way right i feel like i'm making some progress in this room now We've got half of the clay balls coming off, going down there into the press to turn into clay blocks. That's then getting split three ways. Two of them are going to go back up into this chute here and get smelted. That's going to give us two thirds of all of the clay blocks being smelted into terracotta. The final third's going to come along this line and basically go down to the storage vaults to go outside. Now, this is where this bit gets complicated because we need the terracotta that's been blasted to then split into two lines so we can store half of it and turn the other half into red sand. So out of this funnel, line coming from our blasting chamber we've got two brass funnels in order to split the line into two half of it's going to go straight back down into the storage system and the other half which is only going to allow terracotta blocks through hopefully not all of them then needs to be crushed into red sand so i've got to fit some crushing wheels in here as well then we can take that back downstairs not that i ain't got a way to go downstairs anymore that's usual and then at that point everything that we were planning for this build should be processed and just needs to be hooked up to these item vaults and just like that we now have a crushing wheel system in and i've gone for a horizontal one and i I'm making some big old spaghetti mess in here, but I'm trying to keep it as relatively compact as possible. So all I got to do at this point is grab that there, stick that on there and put a belt into there. And that should, although I don't think I can get a funnel on there. Okay, we'll bring it one block further out then. Smash that one to bits, bring that out a block further. Then if we extend that funnel down there, bring that up there, they will all go into that funnel and that should all go downstairs. And I think that's everything done so we've got crushing, pressing, up these stairs we've got blasting, downstairs we've got pillagers again. Oh my goodness, what are you doing, you morons? Oh, well, that's quite useful. You're taking a while to die, sir. There he goes. He's dead. Right, you go away. And apart from pillagers, also we've got downstairs washing and haunting. All i got to do is get these items from here into their storage vaults. Well, I think it might be time for a test run. I still think there's a bunch more decorating to do in here, but everything seems to be in place now. We've got a big sort of carousel thing, almost like at the airport here, taking your items around, and they're all going to get sucked into the item vaults. The soul sand line is connected to that, and all of the other stuff from upstairs is connected to that as well, and I'm really hoping this is going to work, because if it doesn't, well, I've got some major changes to make. I know I'm going to have made a mistake somewhere along the line, but we'll soon discover that, won't we? Oh, jeez. Let's concentrate on the clay balls for now. Okay, clay balls are going up that chute. They should be going... Oh, some of them should be coming out here. They are. They're turning into clay blocks. Good. Wait. Stop. 
let's move on. I've actually skipped ahead now about a whole day in terms of making this video, and that's because even though everything's working pretty nicely, I've actually had to reconfigure this factory several times and that one as well, and we'll get to that one in a minute. One of the biggest problems was we weren't getting enough sand in here, and now we're getting a decent amount of sand through, which means we're now producing enough clay balls to actually produce most of the other things we get in. But because of the way that I've arranged all this, it's very difficult to turn certain things off and on when I need to because it's all being powered from the same place. For instance, our little soul sand farm here, I've had to really reduce how much sand can go in it because it's very difficult to turn the whole thing off. And because of how I've changed this carousel, because everything was backing up so that it now comes through these smart chutes into these voided storage drawers and then into the bulk storage, it means that we're literally just throwing soul sand away, which means we're throwing sand away. And we really can't afford to do that at this moment because we just don't have enough sand. So all of this soul sand that's coming off here is going around there and it's literally just getting voided. So I need to find a way to actually stop some of these machines when they're full now going upstairs our clay system is a whole bunch better now we're making way more clay blocks than we were before which is enabling us to produce a lot more terracotta and red sand than we did before and this system over here has completely changed because the old system just wasn't working and now it's a big old mess but it does work and as you can see we're getting all of the items coming through from the furnace as well as red sand coming through there and a bunch of the terracotta we're producing is going into there to make red sand although not very much red sand Sand, but it's plenty for now. Going to the very top level, I haven't made many changes up here at all. In fact, this was all working rather nicely. The only thing I've had to do was add in another chute system down here because we were forcing everything into one chute and this produces so much so quickly that it just kept backing up. So basically with all of the problems solved, everything running nicely, everything being a lot more optimized, apart from the fact that you know we're throwing items into the void rather than shifting them somewhere else, the biggest problem is how much sand and clay we're actually getting get in here. I'm sending a whole lot of sand over to this washing machine in order to produce clay balls so we're getting enough clay to produce all the other things but it's just not enough. Which brings me to the changes I've made to this factory. Now I was really happy with the other factory at the end of the last episode but I've had to tear out the entire thing and start from scratch which took absolutely ages as you might be able to tell now we've got a whole bunch more storage vaults out the front and that's because each one of these has individual items rather than sharing items and if we go through the front door the first thing you'll notice is our cobblestone generator is completely gone that was occupying this space and instead of having that there now We've now got a much bigger sand grinding machine to gr grind gravel into sand. We've got a washing machine to get our iron and flint over on this side. And then if we go upstairs, although there aren't any stairs, so it's very difficult to get up there. In fact, I have to go on this roof and crouch through this back window. We've got a much, much bigger cobblestone generator in here. In fact, it's 16 blocks long by two blocks wide. So we're getting 32 cobble at a time. And I would show you what's happening on the other side, but it's difficult to see and I can't get to it. But there's a whole bunch of crushing wheels in there, turning all of that into gravel, bringing it into this buffer tank here. And that's all getting split into the individual areas downstairs. And did you know you can put redstone links on these funnels to stop them? So rather than having to stop the entire machine downstairs, we can actually just stop these funnels, sending out items to certain bits when these storage vaults are full which is really useful but even with all of those changes and all of that going on we're still not producing anywhere enough sand and clay which is really the bottleneck for this entire system that said though this system works a whole lot better now we've got the same sort of carousel thing going on we've got in the other factory with the same sort of voided storage drawers and none of these are filling up because the majority of it's all getting taken away so the last few jobs on my list are to find a way to make these off and honorable so we're not wasting sand in areas where it's not needed and then to come back Back to this factory yet again fix this cobblestone generator because at the moment there's nowhere to get around in this room and it's really awkward doing anything and also it spits out loads of cobble all over the floor because the belts underneath are just not fast enough to take it so i better get cracking good news after a couple more hours, I have managed to completely reorganize all of this upstairs section with the cobblestone generator and get everything massively optimized. And I can even move around it a little bit. So let's have a look at what I've done. Instead of all of the gravel going along the cobblestone generator and going to the end, it now all comes out through these brass funnels onto this conveyor here. And that conveyor goes all the way down. And as you can see, not every single brass funnel is allowed to let cobble out in order to improve the flow. If I take off these Anderson 
sight casings here, it just goes absolutely nuts and it all backs up over here. And down at the other end, at the end of all of those lanes, there is this storage vault here which collects cobblestone. Now this cobblestone generator will generate a stack of cobble every two seconds. So half a stack every second. And these crushing wheels will crush a stack of cobblestone every five seconds. So I need two and a half pairs of crushing wheels in order to keep up with the cobble that we're generating. And obviously you can't have two and a half, so we've got three. So that's keeping up with the cobble that's being generated, which means we've hardly ever got any cobblestone in there, but it is coming through. That's then all getting stored into this temporary storage vault here, which is then letting out not quite so much sand and gravel out of here, which means this thing is actually slowly filling up. It's just about keeping up with everything. I've got it as optimized as I can. And as usual, we've got pillagers. Stop it. So this factory, I would say, is pretty much done. It's all 100% optimized. It can't go any faster. And that should mean that we're getting a reasonable amount of sand and clay over in this one now. And I've made absolutely no changes to this one at all, because to be honest with you, I'm pretty happy with it. We're getting a nice even spread of items. We've got one and a half thousand red sand, about 1,800 terracotta, 1.15 thousand clay, which is good because we don't need as much of that compared to the other things. The bricks haven't gone up a great deal because I've turned that right down because I really don't need all that many bricks. And of course, the soul sand's full and our glass is getting pretty full as well. But again, I've turned that right down because we don't need a lot of that. And looking at the rest of the systems, you can see these clay box coming through here at full pelt. The red stand's still getting processed here. And right at the top of the building up here, we've got all of the things coming through our smeltery. So aside from a bit of decoration, I've done nothing in here. I've done nothing in the offices over here. And a lot of this stuff could do with some guardrails and girders and all that sort of thing but aside from that i'm really happy with it it's all come together quite nicely in the end